Good morning, I'm Jo Honour. This is for those of you unable to join us at church tomorrow, St Barnabas in Derby, on Sunday the 20th of September. We're continuing a sermon series on growing in Christian character and the theme for tomorrow is faith. Our readings will be from Luke chapter 8 where Jesus calms the storm and Colossians chapter 1 where Paul gives thanks for the faith of the Christians in that new generational church. I heard someone say recently, faith is the opposite of panic and it got me thinking because lots of us are dealing with feelings of panic, whether mild or extreme at the moment, aren't we? Whether it's linked to our fear of the COVID-19 disease itself or our fear about the changes that our lives are having to adjust to at a much wider level. Everything about the world situation feels stormy, doesn't it? The internal storms of our hearts and minds seem to mirror actual external storms. Fire, wind, floods. These things are really happening in the physical world. And it can feel, do you remember, we're all doomed. Well, you remember the response, don't panic. And so our Christian becomes crucial as we seek to grow and mature and work out what to do with our fear and panic. In the story we've just heard read from Luke 8, Jesus asks his followers, where is your faith? And for you and me, during a time when life is so stormy for so many reasons, it's a good question to ask ourselves. Not in order to feel guilty about our times of panic or fear, but in order to identify and take stock of who we are and can be as people of the Christian faith, of who we are and can be as forgiven and saved people who have a relationship with Jesus, God the Son, who calms the storms. How can our faith make a difference? In our church service, we've joined together in saying the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. You can read it for yourself. I wonder when we say this, these words, whether we mean them. I wonder whether it can, this speaking out these words can make a difference. Three things seem significant in the story of calming the storm to me. The first is that faith is a deliberate action. Jesus asks, where is your faith of his disciples? In other words, I know you have it. It's there. Where have you put it? Why aren't you using it in this situation? This might be an illustration. In the Western world, we're very used to having things on automatic. Most of us will have heating systems, which if we program them correctly, will just turn on when the temperature gets to the point when we want our environment to get warmer. And possibly we might discover that we treat our faith like this. We wait for it to kick in automatically when the temperature of our lives drops. But faith is not like an automatic heating system. When Jesus asks his disciples, where is your faith? He is telling us that faith is a deliberate action. As our series title reminds us, we need to be growing in faith. And gardeners among us will know that growing stuff takes effort and decision, learning and action. The second thing is that faith is not an abstract or general thing. Rather, it is a solid, specific thing that grows from our relationship with Jesus. Which is why reciting the creed needs, means nothing if it's just words. Jesus knew that the disciples in the boat had faith because they'd been living with him and learning from him and developing a relationship with him for some time. As they grew in this relationship and became missionaries and leaders of the new Christian community, they were going to look back on their time with Jesus and their memories of his intervention in their lives 
and they would know that resurrected and ascended he would be with them through the Holy Spirit during whatever storms they face and most of them were going to face face some pretty difficult storms let's just pause for a moment and consider our own relationship with Jesus how has he been there for us how has his love and forgiveness transformed our lives how have you known him as the good shepherd in dark valleys how have you known him as the man who calms the seas The third thing is that the presence of Jesus makes a real difference that changes everything. For the disciples caught in this storm, Jesus sorts it out practically for them, doesn't he? The storm subsided and all was calm, Luke tells us. There was a physical intervention by Jesus that removed the danger. But that did not mean that the disciples would not encounter danger in the future. There were going to be more storms very significant life event storms for all the disciples. But this was a moment where their faith was being grown and developed, ready to face the call of God on their earthly lives. Jesus has the power to change the impact of the storms on our lives. I can't talk about this without going to my go-to verse, John 16:33. Jesus says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. When we are in Christ and he is in us, it is possible to have peace even in the worst of storms. These words of Jesus were the ones he called to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching people to obey everything I have commanded you. We read those words in Matthew 28. They and others, including Paul the Pharisee convert, and writer of most of the letters in the New Testament did just that. Passing on the faith that had grown in maturity and understanding as they had spent time with Jesus. Listening to him, experiencing his intervention in their lives and the lives of others. Because they had a relationship with Jesus whom they understood to have forgiven and accepted them because they could sense the cleaning up of their lives that his Holy Spirit was doing, because they wanted to pass on to others this wonderful news, they did so. And because they listened and learned and obeyed, you and I are sitting here today. Because of them, we can take strength from the faith that we have inherited from Christians down the centuries, who have passed on to our generation our COVID-19 generation, the truths of the gospel, the truths that allow us to live a life of faith and hope and love, those three things that remain, the greatest of which is love. Which is why I asked for that second reading from Colossians. It's the fruit of faith in our lives is going to impact the lives of those around us. So I'd like to read it again, slowly and carefully. As I do, imagine that this letter is being written specifically and particularly about you. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the world, whole world, just as it has been doing among you 
since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. Jesus is asking us this morning, where is your faith? Have a think when you get some time alone. Take stock of your faith and ask, do I decide to act out my faith? Does my relationship with Jesus mean that my faith is growing? Does my faith in Jesus really make a difference in my daily life? And if the answer to these questions is a bit shaky for you at the moment, take some encouragement from another story in the Bible. I was torn between using this story and the storm story I plumped for in the end. In Mark 9, we read of a man whose son suffered from convulsions. He hoped that Jesus could help him, but it seems he wasn't sure. So he says to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus replies, if you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaims, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. That was the first step that he took. His first step towards faith was articulating his lack of it. His first step towards faith was articulating his lack of it. And that step was the first step on the road to healing. If you're doubtful about the way your faith is impacting your life at the moment, borrow this prayer from this man whose desperate need brought him to the feet of Jesus. Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I believe that Jesus will do that for you. Just reflect as we think now about the way in which the human life of Jesus has drawn us into understanding Jesus, God the Son. See the stricken boat as it is tossed upon the Sorrow. 